In this video, I have a part that I want to print very light, so I'm going to print it with only two walls of thickness. But the six holes in the front are taking threaded inserts that melt into place, and they're required to have a two millimeter thick wall around the hole opening. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do that. I've already created a sketch with the two millimeter walls around each hole, and I'm going to create a new part by selecting each of the rings and extruding them the thickness of my part, which is 10 millimeters. All the alignment looks okay, so I'm going to go ahead and create six new parts within the main part. And as you can see on the left, we have six new parts, and each one of these six new ones is the cylinder that we just created. I'm now going to export the six cylinders and the main body, basically everything that's visible right now as a step file, and import that into Bamboo Studio. So this object is really seven objects. We're going to go in the Objects tab and split them into seven separate parts. We can click on each of the seven parts and see them highlighted in the solid model. And we can change the number of wall loops for each. I'm going to select all six cylinders and set the wall loop thickness to six, which should print them solid. You'll notice that the parts that I changed now have an orange padlock, and that means they'll no longer obey the global setting. You'll see here that I have two wall loops for my main part. If I go into the global settings and change the loops to three, you'll see the objects that don't have a padlock have obeyed the global setting and the padlocked settings are unchanged. And here we can see the result of those cylinders being printed with six layers and the rest of the part being printed with two. I'll pause it here for a second and you can see that there is a defect ring around each hole. There is a way to get rid of that and I'll show you that now. I'm basically just shortening both ends of the cylinder so that they're embedded within the solid model. So here instead of 10 millimeters thick, I'm going to make it eight. And the front edge of each cylinder, I'm going to cut two millimeters off. So basically these cylinders are fully embedded within the walls of the original part. And if we turn on the section analysis, we can sweep through the part and see where the cylinders start and end. Just like last time, we're going to export and drag this into Bamboo Studio. Once we're in Bamboo Studio, we're gonna select the part and split it into all seven parts. Select the six cylinders, change the wall thickness to six. The rest of the part has three wall thicknesses, and now we have no more defects around the holes. Well, actually inside the hole you can see a defect, but that'll be hidden. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison showing the two methods. This is what the first method looks like with the circular defects. I didn't notice, but I got my cylinder too close to the wall and there wasn't enough room to fit a wall loop in certain areas. And this is what it looks like with the cylinder embedded within the walls of the part. Much cleaner. This seems like the best way to do it. Another option is to put perforations around the hole that you want to reinforce. The slice rule want to put a wall around each one of these perforated holes, and that effectively prints a solid area around the perimeter. This does leave a couple pores in your finish, and probably induces a couple stress concentrations as well. I'm not sure that this is any easier, but it's another option for you. This is what the perforation method looks like. This is my first attempt at installing these threaded inserts with a soldering iron. I can definitely see the value in having a fixture that inserts these pins perfectly perpendicular, but I'd have to design a fixture to hold my part facing up. So in case you're wondering, this is what the final product looks like. It simply clips on to the seat post, and with the six bolts already pre-installed, you just need to tighten them. And it feels pretty solid. I can lift the whole bike, doesn't seem to flex much. The slots on the side accept a one inch wide Velcro strap, and this 18 inch strap fits perfectly. I designed this bike rack to hold a long sleeve shirt or a light rain jacket on my bike rides. If you'd like to download and print one, I'll leave a link in the description below where you can download it. In my example, I'm printing the holes in an almost vertical orientation, and I think that's really accentuating the distortion. So here I designed this flat coupon, and I'm going to print it in a flat orientation and see how the results look. So on the left I have the perforations, in the middle I have the exposed cylinder, and on the right I have the embedded cylinder. When we get to the top, you can see the circular defect in the middle hole. Here we are halfway through the print and the final print. Printing on a flat surface definitely hides a lot more of the defects because they get ironed out. Well, that pretty much wraps it up for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and thanks again for watching.